So it's the Dark Souls 2 lore run. And last time we started the game, we're in New Game Plus. And um, rather than take the typical route that people take when you play Dark Souls 2, I decided the first thing I was going to do was hop in that hole and go to the gutter. So we finished the gutter. Uh, we finished the Grave of Saints. And um, now we're in the Black Gulch. And we've got a bit of stuff to do here. So it uh, should be fun. And yeah, like I said, we're in New Game Plus. Because New Game Plus changes a lot of stuff in Dark Souls 2. And I wanted to show that off. And uh, <clears throat> I let chat decide. Like, they got to have a vote. If they would rather see a New Game playthrough or a New Game Plus playthrough. Chat decided to do New Game Plus. And I'm actually glad that they did. So we're using Clyde. And uh, he used to be a Hyde Knight. Clyde, Clyde Knight the Hyde Knight. Um, now he's like one of my vampire hunter dudes. He's like a uh, whip man. Also, Finny the Cat, welcome back. Thank you for 15 months. It's called Dark Souls 2 because you need to play it twice to unlock everything. Will you rest in the Grave of Saints when you die? Homie, I died in the Grave of Saints so many times. <laughs> there's a... There's a Black Spirit Cleric and a, um... And a Black Spirit... Uh... Faram Knight. Just hanging out. And they whipped my ass. So... I mentioned this earlier, but, um, <clears throat> the, uh, we've been invaded by the Forlorn. We're seeing all these statues, and the statues, um, are, like, spitting poison. Like, I am not typically a passive reactive type player. Ooh! But I might have to be with this build. Ah! I went for the backstep iframes. I should have a bunch of backstep iframes, but I'm still going to have to learn how to do it. I never, <laughs> I never use them anymore because like all my builds have base adaptability. So now that I'm playing a build that has adaptability again, I'm gonna have to like relearn uh, backstep timing. Oh man, for some reason I thought destroying the statues worked forever. It does not work forever. So, uh, I know there's a place to drop down over here. And we want to do that. Oh, look! Ziggy, thank you for the raid! Welcome in, raiders. Ziggy, thank you. Lazioz? Roboto? Cody, no? He went offline and sent us here. Well, hello. Welcome. I'm St. Riot. We're playing Dark Souls 2. We're in New Game Plus. And, uh... Just kinda exploring and discussing lore. I think this is new. I think, uh... I think the addition of... Amount of, amount of uh, bolts. I think the addition of this dude is new. I don't think he was here in New Game. I'm like, 100% sure. That's one of those uh, Sunken King DLC enemies. 
that carries the spitty statues on their back, which is good because since we're talking about lore, uh oh, since we're talking about lore, um, I'm I'm like a hundred percent certain that the rotten is the namesake of the sunken king or like some weird variation of him or some like weird sentient group of corpses that was like loyal to the sunken king uh but i i would think i would think that it's actually him in fitting with how we fight like the actual Iron King. Um, and then the Lost Center is a little different, but so I mean, like, you know, it, it could go either way, but I, I think he's. I think <clears throat> that the Rotten is supposed to be the Sunken King. We found an NPC! Everybody loves Luca Teal. I honestly don't like her that much. Everybody thinks she's great. I, I could kind of. I could kind of, you know, like. Little, little too. Uh, little too Babby's first nihilism for me, but. But everybody loves her, so you know I'm not gonna hate. I'll just I'll let y'all let y'all appreciate her. What is it? I don't know you, and you don't know me. Things are better that way. I would also like to point out that literally every NPC in Dark Souls 2 is like, "Don't talk to me! Don't talk to me!" And then you talk to him again, and they're like. Here's my life story. It's here's my life story. Since you asked, let me get it all off my chest. And then you talk to him a third time, and they're like, "You're my best friend I've ever had. I love you." It's pretty, pretty quick. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to win these people over. <sighs> You are an odd one. Normally, people keep a safe distance when they see this mask. But you... I'm called Lucatil. From the land of Mira to the far east, across the mountains. They say Drang Lake brims with powerful souls. And so I came to claim my share. But what a strange place. Even the rumors did not prepare me. I'm thinking about... <clears throat> I'm sure we'll find some armor and some stuff like that that will tell us about Mira, which is nice. But I'm also thinking about... Um, in order to complete NPC quests in Dark Souls 2, you have to actually summon them and let them help you kill bosses. Like, you have to kill bosses with summons. Uh... <clears throat> to to complete their quests rather than you know run all over God's creation and and find weird items and do certain things and unlock certain doors or whatever like in Dark Souls one and Dark Souls three and Bloodborne um <clears throat> you just have to summon them and beat a boss with them and that's it and if you do that three times you finish their quest line. And I'm thinking about whether or not we should do that. You are an odd one indeed. I've always made a point of avoiding people. While you've made a point of engaging me. I can see that you are mid-journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. I come from Mira, a land of knights. My sword is always ready. Don't hesitate to call upon me. Whatever happens, I won't be missed. <laughs> we don't get much from her, like, lore-wise here. Just the fact that she's a knight of Mira, and uh, she's here from a long way away, uh, and now she's our best friend, and she'll help us fight all the monsters. You are an odd one in while you've made a... I can see that you are mid-journey. If you require assistance, I will help you. I do appreciate that they gave the NPCs, like... from Mira, a land of knights. Don't hesitate. They gave the NPCs, like, body language, which is nice. Um, 
compared to like Souls, where they just like you know, or, I, okay, this is a Souls game. Compared to like Dark Souls One uh, and Dark Souls Three, uh, where they just stand there, <laughs> no matter what's going on, all they do is just stand and look. Big, gross earthworm coming out the thing. Another thing I'm thinking about is whether or not like the game took my uh, the game took my fragrant branches of yore and I don't know if we have any now. But we would like to have one. Because that's where they keep the bonfire. It's behind the fragrant branch. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Maybe, thank God. Don't have all day here, man. Gotta move. Gotta move. Get eye framed. Uh, so the enemies in this area are like the weird, gross hand thing and the big earthworm guy. Oh, the sweet spot. Damage. Holy shit. How much stamina do you have? And, um, you know, we're, we're, like, really, 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 like, low in the game. Like, in the world, right? We're, like, way below sea level. And it reminds me of, um, it reminds me of, uh, how, like, life gets weird. Real deep in the ocean. And, like, real far underground. Like, like life that evolves there is, like, strange. Um. And then we have this jerk. He's got no poise, thankfully. Woo! Can't block. <clears throat> like ninety nine percent sure that that guy's supposed to be a um. That guy's supposed to be uh, a shout out to the demon souls um. Black spirits, the black phantoms in uh in the mines in uh Stonefang Tunnel in in two two. You fight two of them, and they use great clubs and great shields, and they're naked. I'm like 99% sure those dudes are just supposed to be like callbacks to those. <sighs> I mean, they do things. They do things that are interesting with like the the showing you the way the. The undead curse affects people's memory and like the the mental effects of like going hollow. They do stuff that's good. Um, I'm you know with with the NPCs, but they 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 do this thing over and over and over and over again, where they're like, "Don't talk to me," and then they're like, just immediately like, "Huh, I would have never talked to you 
but you pressed talk twice. And since you t pressed talk twice, you are now the kingdom of my heart. And I will die for you until all of the gods have withered into a, into a, a garbage trash. Alright, so one down, one to go. Also, you'll notice these things are like, getting like, blasted by poison and they just don't get, so the game just cheats and is like, now nah, these guys can't be poisoned because that would be annoying. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, if I invade here, will I get poisoned? And the answer is yes, you will. Yes, you will get poisoned. Because the game doesn't give a shit about you. It only... Ah, I tried the... God damn! I tried the backstep thing again. Take a swing! I'm so bad at the backstep thing. I I have I've run base adaptability on like every character for like the past two years that I've played Dark Souls 2, which admittedly hasn't been a lot, but 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 I have. That's what I've done, and Even even with some of those characters, I've been able to pull up pull off back steps for iframes. Great axe attacks have weird linger. I can I can believe that. I can see that. But like, I, if if that's the case, you would think I wouldn't take like the sweet spot damage. I don't. I didn't. To be honest, I'm not sure I did. I just think I did. Who gave you all the poise, Woodland Child Victor? Huh? Who gave you all that poise? No, it wasn't me. God damn. Why is it so hard? I'm getting uh I'm getting all stone for defeating these guys cuz cuz of the the champion's covenant Um, do I have any poison throwing knives? I do. I do have poison throwing knives. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um. Okay. Let's, uh. We got some more exploring to do. We love exploring. Can't get enough of it. Love to go explore. So that door's up there that we... That door's locked. We'll come in here into the... The dark nothingness. And down here in the dark nothingness, we run into giants. We've been invaded by Remy. Shit. 
shit, shit, shit. Okay, the giants thankfully don't respawn. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't respawn. Which means if we take out if we take them out, they they stay out. I've got enough to poison one. Uh I kind of Ah, there's Remy. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's like a weird explorer guy build. Oh, yeah. Look, he's helpful. This is something that, um, this is something that I should, I, I, I kind of, we've been talking a lot about Elden Ring not having single player invasions. And, um, one of the things that's kind of, I don't consider it anymore because it's, oh my God, I don't really consider it anymore because it's just not something that I do a lot. But it is something that some people do. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? You know, sometimes you invade like a solo host. <laughs> GG, Remy. Sometimes you'll invade like a solo host. And, you know, you just decide to help them out. And, like, that's a fun experience. And I get that not everybody wants it or whatever. But it is something that's, like, unique. And it's, like, it can be completely, like, unique to, like, your entire playthrough. You know, like it might be something that like other people just don't experience. They will never experience it. Um, and that's cool. You know, that's a, that's like a legitimately cool thing. Um, and and yeah, it would be kind of sad to to see that to see that go. I'm out of poison, so now I just gotta now I just gotta beat this dude straight up. God dang these stupid statues. Man, I really hope I'm right and that the giants don't respawn. Oh my god, are you serious? Well, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the hole. What are you going to do about it? Swear to God, the the hitboxes on their weapons are either like way later than I expect them to be, or uh, insane. Like two hits. Man, this rules. <laughs> My favorite thing about fighting a big monster is when it's hard to hit for some reason. Like, this is this is why you should have to play Dungeons and Dragons if you're a video game creator working on an RPG. 
you, you need to play second edition Dungeons and Dragons, and you need to understand how armor class and, and, and size uh, affects uh, your ability to hit something. Like, it's literally so big, how do you miss it? Oh, that was... That was not good. That was not good. Alright, can I toxic you? I can toxic you. Nice. I'm in the hole. You need to come look at me. I'm in the hole. Hey. What are you doing, man? Oh, I got that. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank God. All right, we got a forgotten key and the soul of a giant. Key tossed into the gutter. Key found in the gutter. Intricately designed, but of unknown origin. All manner of terrible things have been cast into the gutter in Majula, forming a settlement of filth and chaos. Which I think kind of goes over uh, the gutter. Um... How this key wound up down here, who the hell knows. But somebody just chucked the key down here, which is odd because it unlocks a door in the gutter. And we got the soul of a giant. The soul of a giant who came to conquer Drang Lake. Will the giant's resentment for the king be pacified in death or only emboldened? Silver Talisman, which is essentially like chameleon, just turns you into an object. What did we get in this chest? What did we get in this chest, chat? I forgot to make note of it. I forgot to make note of what we got in here. Uh, we did get scraps of life up top. An esoteric spell created by Navlon, the infamous exiled sorcerer, awakens the souls of the long-buried dead. The heretic Navlon was executed along with his entire village, and the mere utterance of his name became a crime. Some say it was because he sought to restore the banned art of resurrection. This, this dude trying to bring people back from the dead. Petrified dragon bone and giant ring plus one. Okay. Thank you. The beloved ring of the gallant shieldless Lothian, formerly of Ferosa, increases poise. Lothian was born a peasant and died a general. His determination and diligence were unmatched, especially on the battlefield, where he earned his name by choosing to fight without a shield. Uh, the stone ring was also Lothian's. So, so... Ferosa, at least, uh, like, you could come up through the ranks. You didn't have to be, like, born, you know, somebody to be somebody. 
it would seem. Because he was born a peasant, died a general. That's pretty good, I guess. Do you want to just be born and fight all day? It is kind of strange, because, like, who did Navlon, who did Nav Navlon, like, seek to resurrect? Because humans just do it naturally. Uh, so who was, who, who was Navlon after? I forgot my dang binoculars. So these enemies here can drop you uh, Titanite Chunks. If you need to farm Titanite Chunks, this is one place to do it. Um, it's not a common drop, but it's not a rare drop. It's like an uncommon drop. Uh, no. So I talked to Luca Teal here. I assume I can summon her here. But I'll be honest, I don't know where her summon sign is. Is it in front of the boss or is it somewhere else? Also, Solar and Arwell, welcome back and thank you for 11 months. Do you plan on playing any other Final Fantasy games? Final Fantasy 16, when it comes out, I'm very excited for that. Um, and I would like to play those pixel remasters on uh, on PC. <laughs> What's up, Stochastic? Well, I assumed we could summon Lucatil. Here, but I don't know where the hell her summon sign's at. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't summon her here. I know you can summon her for the Lost Sinner. Um. But I'm not sure who else for. Uh. It's not going to be anything after... It's not going to be anything after uh, the keep. That's for sure. Oh, no. That was bad. I just missed. And I think that was the last of my, like, fire. Yeah, that was the last of my fire. Um... damage. Oh, he just charged at me. 
You can summon her in No Man's Wharf, right? So there's two. Says it's located by the hidden chamber bonfire room. Well, I didn't see it. Oh, I'm in the Champion's Covenant. I can't summon anybody. Way to go, chat. Way to be dumb. <laughs> this is like the hardest treasure to get in all of Dark Souls 2. Because Dark Souls 2 wanted to do a thing where... You know... You see a treasure chest and you take a swing at it, right? Just to make sure it's not a mimic. Um, Dark Souls 2 wanted to do a thing where... There was a chance if you swung too much at a treasure chest, you would break it. So... This chest over here, where my bloodstain is at... That's, like, the easiest one in the game to break. That thing spits poison at you. Uh All right, let's let's try here. I don't want to break the chest. I just want to break the statue. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's go see what's up with the rotten. This should be interesting because Dark Souls 2 does a thing where like the bosses get new mechanics in New Game Plus. And um so I'm not sure what to expect, but I'm I I expect it to be different. Sometimes it's not too different. Sometimes it's just like like a new move or something like along those lines. Um, but sometimes it can be pretty interesting stuff. You can hear all the, the busy little groans and moans behind the fog wall. So this fella seems to be making the statues, right? I know that, ow. I know that like a big corpse made of corpses is like nothing new to like souls boss guys. But I really, I really like the rotten. I really like how he's got two guys sticking out of his mask like eyeballs. Also, there's a lot of, uh, like, there's a lot of stuff in Dark Souls 2 that, that feels like, oh, hey, that's pretty neat. Like, stuff they were doing for Bloodborne, and they were like, can we borrow that? And the Rotten kind of borrows the limb break mechanic. Like, we can straight up chop off his arms. 
Um, the Puzzling Stone Sword, another. And one of the other things I was talking about, how Dark Souls 2, there were some aspects of Dark Souls 2 that made it seem like they, they, like they were, they were making like a Demon Souls sequel rather than a Dark Souls 1 sequel. One of the things is uh, a boss who uses the, the, the butcher's knife really gives off uh, Judicator vibes. I'm not exactly sure what that does, and obviously, I don't want to find out. I bet it hurts, though. Sort of a dark, corrupted, wrath of God type attack. So now he doesn't have a weapon. And if we cut off his other arm, he actually, uh... He drops a Pharaoh Stone out of that one. He can regrow his arm. Because it's just corpses, you know? Yeah, he regrows the weapon as well. Because, you know, duh. <laughs> so, because we killed him in New Game Plus, not only did we get his soul, the soul of the rotten, we also got uh, the old dead one's soul. Um, these are called souls of the ineffable. And ineffable means, like, indescribable and unspeakable. Let me give you, like, the actual definition. Too great or extreme to be expressed or described in words. Also, not to be uttered. Um, like... Mm. 
we we like this we can't comprehend which is funny because uh Shao Kwa, the cat told you know like she calls them the old ones this once magnificent soul continues to exert influence over the land even after the eons have reduced it to these remnants use it to acquire numerous souls or to create something of great worth soul of the rotten who writhes deep within the gutter the rotten embraces all in his sanctuary for all things unwanted or tossed away. Use the special soul of the rotten to acquire numerous souls or to create something of great worth. So the rotten is down here and um, and we have like the you know black gulch and, and there's no humans in the black gulch. No one lives in the black gulch. Um, but there is a uh, a human settlement above it in the gutter and the gutter is a place where people have been like cast out and thrown down into that pit probably people who like you know had the curse and people that like had the curse and were uh you know like oh you're sick you're getting quarantined into the trash hole where you live you know, or, or maybe people who were just, like, unsavory, and everybody, all those people got, like, chucked in the hole. And in a sort of, like, Maiden Astraea type turn, the Rotten was like, nah, this is where people can hang out. This is where people can hang out. Like, it's cool if you want to come here and live here. The... This, this guy protects a primal bonfire. Like, he's one of the old ones, right? And the primal bonfire that he protects, once we have the key will allow us to access the Sunken King DLC. So, Vendrick has gone around and, like, conquered all these, um, ruinous kingdoms, much like we do, and the, the, those people had gone and conquered ruinous kingdoms before them, and I, I really think that the, that the, the Rotten is, like, the Sunken King. And, and he's building these statues of a woman who spits poison. And, like, it, it's it's almost like a metaphor for, like, she's a liar. Um, and, of course, the, the Sunken King DLC, we fight... Uh, we don't fight, you know, the Sunken King. We fight his queen. And his queen, like, sings this song. And she's brought all of these other women with her. And the women also sing a song. And they can sing the song, and they can poison you with it. Um, it's like she has she has turned his kingdom into like a poisonous pit, like just a, an absolute wasteland. And so, like, I like the idea that he's sitting here like building these statues because he's basically like obsessed with his ex-wife. <laughs> the city of the sunken king sleeps, as does the dragon within. With water dry and path amiss, woeful temptation is dismissed. Dis, 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 I have a lisp. With water, with water dry and path amiss, woeful temptation is dismissed. Trespassers will face the adversity, or will face adversity befitting a monarch. Forbidden is the path to the ancient king's domain. A primal bonfire was rekindled. Hey, lady. I got one of those things you were talking about. You have acquired the soul of an old one. That is more than most undead can say. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty badass about it, if we're being honest. So here's the thing about Dark Souls 2. 
It has this thing called soul memory. So if I don't use these souls, like nothing, like I'm, I, they still count. Like I, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I might as well use them <laughs> because if I don't use them, I'm, I'm still, they're still gonna count towards my, my online stuff anyway. So I could wear the agape ring and just sort of avoid them, but I'm not going to. We are hurting for damage in a way because our old whip is uh, is broken and I need to fix it, but I don't have a blacksmith yet because rather than go to the forest of fallen giants, we went to the we went to the the, the gutter. That's a large titanite shard. I'm pretty sure in new game that's just a titanite shard. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I might be wrong. It might be. It might always be a large titanite shard. Uh, oh. Oh, hello there. W welcome to my uh, shop. I'm Morlin, and I, well, I sell armor. It's a regular shard oh, in New sorry, Game. I... Nice, thank Please you guys. Please do have a look at my wares. I like this guy. I could really use the business. <laughs> if you'd be so kind. This is, I like this guy. Um, because one, he's likable, and he's like, you know, not really sure of himself. Uh, Mofflin, the armorer. Um, I like him because, like, he's not super sure of himself. And he's like, yeah, hey. And he's just likable because he's, you know, he's not exuding self-confidence. However, the more you buy stuff um, from him, the more confident he becomes. And at a certain point, there's like t there's like three tiers of Mofflin, 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 Mofflin. There's like three tiers of this guy. There's the one who's like, hey, uh, I, I, I sell stuff. <laughs> and then there's another one who's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, people are buying my stuff. And then there's tier three Mofflin who's like, oh, who are you? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm pretty much a big shot. You can't expect me to remember everybody. And what changes is how much you buy from him. Like, how much stuff you buy determines how uh, full of himself he gets. And it's a, it's a, it's a nice, I think, um, illustration of the way collecting souls and becoming wealthy with souls uh, would affect a person. Almost like it's not even really that person's fault. Like, it's just a thing that happens when a person is... when, when a person has acquired, like, too much. I came from the West. From Volgan. Like the like the souls exert some Have sort of there? influence on place, the person. Vibrant with trade. Very competitive, of course. And you, you have to grease the wheels to get anywhere. But I didn't have the funding for that, so I left home in hopes of striking gold. It's been years since then, and I've <laughs> well, I've made very little headway. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm still here. Everything's all run down and dying. It's t terrible for business, really. And one of the reasons that's interesting is because Dark Souls 1's DLC and Dark Souls 2 uh, focus heavily on the idea of souls and humanity as exerting influence on like the natural condition of, of, of people. Ulysil goes apeshit crazy because of what they did to Manus. They they dug him up and they tortured the dude until his humanity 
Uh, and he was like a wellspring of humanity. He was just giving out humanity. He couldn't, like, you know... It, but they were torturing him for it. And then at a certain point, he snaps, and all of the humanity that he had, that, that, that came from him, goes crazy, goes wild, and you end up with Ulysil. But the people of Ulysil were, were, like, they wanted more humanity. More, more, more humanity. Um, and, like, that's actually, like, a pretty human trait, right? One that was embodied by Manus. Uh, one that, that broke apart and became its own, its own thing. The, the idea of, of want and and souls and humanity is like almost sentient or if not sentient at least like they have the ability to seek a group calling themselves the blue sentinels have gained much power in Volgan you can't even run a shop without their blessing they claim to be working for the greater good, oh, but it's absolute hogwash. <sighs> oh, by the gods, why the hell am I here? <sighs> oh, I... Well, I, I, well, I do hope I see you again. Now that we have the cat ring, if I'm not mistaken, there's a way, or I'm sorry, now that we have the key, if I'm not mistaken, we should be able to get down to, is it that one? I think, okay, wait. If I drop down here and jump, I'll land on that one. But that's not the one I want to land on. No, 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 it is. It is. I want to land on that one. And then I want to try and drop all the way down. <laughs> and we want to land on that one. Uh... Oh, Lord. Soul Vortex. Dragon Talon. Soul Vortex. One of the lost sorceries preserved only in the undead crypt fires successive homing souls. Extremely difficult sorcery to evade, making it very effective against frisky foes. The terribly worn Dragon Talon. Legend has it that in the deepest reaches of the Black Gulch, behind a door locked from the inside, is a magnificent city built for the great, for a great slumbering dragon. This Talon clearly dates to ancient times, but great vitality emanates from it still.
Witch Tree Branch and Wilt Witch Tree Belvine. Also, Bear Man Pig, thank you for the gift sub to Rusty. Rusty, welcome back to your emotes. And Bear Man Pig, thank you very much. The Witch Trees, this is one of the things, like, the there's a short-sightedness um, and, and, like, an easy-to-digest sort of, like, Vadi Vidya tier um <laughs> and I, I don't like that's no disrespect towards Vadi it's it's more just like there, there's like one million people who will like watch a, a Vadi video and sort of be like oh this is this must be canon then right um like a real like reddit tier opinion is that Dark Souls 2 is kind of like, oh, it doesn't count. It's not it's not canon because Miyazaki didn't work on it. Um, but in Dark Souls 2, we can access the Abyss. We can go to the Chasm of the Abyss. And when we're in the Chasm of the Abyss, we run into this strange enemy who is like a tree man. And um, I suspect that the tree man is a witch tree. And... So, in Dark Souls 3, when we fight Pontiff Sullivan, in Phase 2 of the Pontiff Sullivan fight, he summons, like, a witch tree-type clone of himself. Um, and we know that Pontiff Sullivan was from the Painted World, and there's cut content of one of the tree women, like, crying and talking about how she misses her kid, and how she wants her kid to come home. And she's uh, guarding the um, uh, one of Pontiff Sullivan's spells. I forget which one. But um, they they cut out her voice dialogue. So like, all right, let's just assume that that's not we're not gonna we're not gonna take cut content into consideration or whatever. But like, it, you it's still uh like why did I find why did I find this Pontiff Sullivan spell being pro being protected by this one tree enemy, and why is this one tree enemy different from every other tree enemy in this DLC? Right? So anyway, what, are, what the hell are they? Branch of a forest wandering witch tree. A catalyst for sorceries and hexes. Now it is used as a weapon, but this was originally part of a witch tree. Witch tree belvine that sprouts amongst old growth. A catalyst for miracles and hexes. Clerics who were ostracized devised this as an alternative catalyst for casting miracles. Most clerics who are stripped of their status are good for nothing, but among them are powerful spellcasters who represented real threats to the establishment. Although not a proper catalyst, the Belvine is quite powerful. And Great Lightning Spear. A miracle that launches a great spear of lightning, said to be the legacy of an ancient clan whose leader was revered as the, the god of sun. The name of the clan has been lost to time, but the gross incandescence of our magnificent father shall never wane. The the whole second half, like, it's, it's like, re remember the sun bros? <laughs> um, but what's interesting here is we find... Miracles and sorceries together with catalysts for miracles. So like on this side we find a sorcery, here we find catalysts for miracles and sorceries, and here we find a miracle. And this was all locked away for some reason. Now obviously you can you can sort of understand why they would lock away the dragon talon. Like they don't want people going there. Um. Ring of the Evil Eye plus one. Also, just from like a meta standpoint, just from like a meta standpoint, like Miyazaki didn't work on Dark Souls 2, but he was the he was like a project supervisor. And when they were working on Dark Souls 2, they were already contracted to work on Dark Souls 3. So you've got these two directors, Yui Tanamura and the guy who quit, um, Shibuya. 
Shibuya quit, the game gets essentially scrapped, and they have to start all over. Uh, in, in, there was an interview where Tanamura talked about how, like, they were trying to take the game in, like, a weird direction. And um, it had a lot of, like, elements of, like, time travel in it. And Bandai Namco was like, no, this isn't, this isn't enough like Souls. People aren't going to know, you know, we want it to be more like Souls. More like Dark Souls 1. And so, like, they basically had to, like, scrap the entire thing. Then on top of that, they had they had they had built this like lighting mechanic that was you know designed to take advantage of like next generation hardware, um, but they wanted the game out on the current generation, so they had to scrap that as well. And they basically just had to like rebuild this entire game. Um, all of you know, I'm sure all of the stuff was there, the animations were there, the things were there, but they they had to just cobble it together and sort of make it work as it worked. Um, if you follow Lance McDonald on Twitter, a lot of times he'll post early takes of, uh, bosses or enemies in Bloodborne, um, and <laughs> in one of the tweets, one of the more recent tweets, uh, he, he was like, he was like, yeah, he was like, the first person who asks me how this ties into the lore considering dot, 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 wins a big button that says they just make it up as they go along, kid. And it's important to remember that, like, they do that. <laughs> they sort of, like, I'm, you know, I'm sure they have, like, a, 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 a start and an ending in mind for these games when they make them. Um, but even that can change. And then everything else in between can get changed. And bosses serve the function that is required of where they are in game and so like a boss like pontiff sullivan used to be like your final boss and then they were like they were like okay we're changing it we're we're we're, we're, we're changing the entire storyline of dark souls 3 now we're not going to chuck pontiff sullivan out we're not going to not use that um but now he's this guy who took over an orlando and became the head of the dark moons right and it's it's hard for us to like if, if you're like a lore nerd, it's hard to like separate those two things, but like you do have to learn how to separate those two things. A modest but inexplicably disturbing ring. Absorb HP for each enemy defeated. Peer too closely at the rare stone that forms the eye of this ring, and things that writhe and stir may come into focus. Um, but yeah. So Tanimura worked on Dark Souls 2 uh, with Miyazaki as like a supervisor. And they already knew that they were going to make Dark Souls 3. I am sure that Miyazaki, like, basically, if nothing else, Tanimura knew not to write Miyazaki into a corner because they're going to have to make Dark Souls 3. He can't, he can't change fundamentally the story, and he has to leave it open enough for Miyazaki to make Dark Souls 3. Um... So, on the topic of like, oh, Dark Souls 2 isn't canon. One of, the, one of the things I talked about when I started this run is that Dark Souls 2 ties into Dark Souls 3 far more closely than, than people, I think, uh, who just sort of like glance at it um, understand. There's, there's a lot going on in Dark Souls 2 that sort of sets... The, the stage for Dark Souls 3. And um, we'll get more into that because that's what this is, that's what this whole thing's about. Like, the games work well together as a story. If you, if you take the time, and I'm not saying you have to agree with me. I'm not saying you have to agree with my takes. Like, maybe you don't think Pontiff Sullivan is a witch tree man. Okay, that's fine. But what I'm saying is, like, if you'll play through the game or watch it and, like, take the time to think about, like, how, wait, Maybe that does have something to do with Dark Souls 3. There are, like, tons of connections that, that you'll find. And, um, and it's interesting. And I like it for that reason. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> We're going to go do something else. But I'm going to put a little split in the VOD right here. Uh, because this, this will be, like, one whole episode on, on YouTube. 
So say, say so long, YouTube, until next time. Chat, you're, that's you. You're supposed to say, you're supposed to say so long, so long, YouTube. Chat, you're awful. YouTube, if you're watching this, Twitch chat just called you jerks. <laughs>